Hello, welcome to Soulprint Intuitive Tarot. It is December 16th. Um, Jerry the Rockstar has decided to celebrate um, Christmas week by starting off our pet parade. So I think I have this straight. I'm always a little confused about the ages of animals because kind of however old they are when they come to us, I tend to stall at that number. I'm pretty sure Jerry is now five and um, th four or five. He is, for those of you who don't know, he is part Maine Coon. He is a rescue. And if any of you have seen him wandering in the back, you will know that he has three legs. He is adorable. He knows it. And thanks to all of the attention he gets from the viewers, he is absolutely positive that he's the rock star. Go have breakfast. Go on. All right. Here comes the... You all know that's Crystal. Come here, little one. Okay, look, be nice, be nice. Okay, Crystal, she's a little camera shy. Crystal, and she has sharp nails. Crystal only loves my daughter. That's it, on the planet. Um, she is going to be 17 in February, so she's entitled to be a cranky old lady, and she is. Um, there we go. She has beautiful blue eyes and she uses them to glare really, really well. Um, that's about all I can say for her. She's been with us since she was literally um, six or seven weeks old. And honestly, you would think by now that she would have decided that she loves us, but she doesn't. All right, go, go, go. Don't pick on the cat dog. This is Miss Ellie. Miss Ellie came to us at the end of August. She was about a year and a half, we think, or maybe a little less when she came to us. She, um, so both of the, the other two rescues that I'm gonna show you now, this is their first Christmas. Um, for Atticus, it's because he's not even yet a year old, and her, because she was a stray, um, and has now found her forever home, um, unless she continues to eat all the decorations, and then we might have a bit of an issue. Um, she's adorable. She's very pretty. Um, and that's what I can tell you about little Miss Ellie. Yeah, yeah, go. This little fella here, oh, I know. This is Atticus. He is going to be long-haired. Um, he, we think he's probably about six or seven months at this point. There you go, good boy. Um, <laughs> He takes life very cautiously. He is also a rescue. Atticus has um, a sort of deformed front paw. Um, there isn't a bone where it should be, and so it's it's just deformed. Um, but he also has some other a sort of congenital birth defects. He's got a twisted spine and a kind of a stumpy tail. Um, but he is adorable, and he has stolen every single one of our hearts. Say Merry Christmas. He says, I don't know what Christmas is. All right. Little Miss Tika. All right. Tika and her brother are 12 year old toy poodles. They just turned 12 in November, and yes, they absolutely did have birthday cake. Um, she's the mouthy one, she's the yappy one. But she is also kind of the most timid, which is a bizarre combination, but that is the deal with um, Tika. She's getting old, but she's doing it with grace. <laughs> Go on, babe. And her brother Skittles. Look okay. nice. Oh, look. There we go. Uh, Skittles is her brother, so he also is 12. He um, is a jumper. Uh, we have lost literally loaves of bread from our counter because he thought maybe he should have a slice. Um, but he's a very good boy. He's a snuggler. He's also ripping my sweater. So, so, hey, puppy. There we go. Okay, so this concludes the pet parade from the Soul Print household. Oh, sure, now you're going to look lovely. Look at you, just being so photogenic. Goodbye, little boy. Go get a treat. Come on. Okay, so 
that was the holiday uh, pet parade. I hope you enjoyed it. It took a fair, fair bit of time. I apologize for anybody who is not interested in animals. Okay, so this is going to be a really, really interesting week, and I'm going to try to pick up my pace here. Um, so a couple things I just want to point out. First of all, I believe it was yesterday, was the seven-year anniversary of Sandy Hook. So let's all just take a moment to send our thoughts to those who were lost, to those who lost them, and to the people who, of course, continue to live with the scars and the damage and the hurt. Um, and let's also please send some positive light to the lawmakers so that um, already, already, this thing can get moved forward and we can get some um, intelligent gun legislation in the United States. Um, Trump has uh, told 15,413 lies in the last 1,055 days. Now, I'm not no math whiz, but I'm taking, that takes us at about 150 or so uh, lies a day. It's quite the title, Liar in Chief. So there's that. Now, take heart. There's a couple things that are good news. The first one was really interesting. Um, there were some polls came out and among independent voters, and they really are the ones that um, the Democrats need to harness and, and corral and get speaking uh, in the same language with them. Um, the number of people who believe among independents that Trump should be impeached and removed from office has gone up from 38% to 45%, which is a 7% um, point advantage. So that's like um, impressive. At least some people are starting to pay attention. And interestingly enough, there was a Fox poll released today. And even in that poll, I don't remember the exact numbers, um, but pe people who wanted him impeached and removed was actually higher than those who thought that it was not, um, you know, a reasonable or responsible thing to do those who opposed it but and this is really interesting among republicans who were polled 52 percent of republicans feel that the um the way they are conducting themselves pertaining to the impeachment and in fact the you know removal from office in the senate when that happens uh, 52 percent believe that their politicians are acting from a political basis as opposed to um you know something that isn't political like maybe i don't know you know trying to save the constitution or something silly like that so there you have it so things are changing things are shifting but this is the thing right you got to understand that this is going to be a slow moving evolution because there's a lot of stuff that has to get brought down in the process all right uh, this is an interesting week this week, December, I guess, starting yesterday, so December 15th, going forward. Um, the, thank you for the corrections, by the way. The, the hearing, no, this morning, the impeachment um, report was released, some 600 pages of it. The uh, markup goes on, apparently, on Tuesday, and on Wednesday, the way I understand it, it is going to be debated and then voted on. Um, so once it passes, and I'm sure it's going to the House, um, Trump will be impeached officially, and then it moves over to the Senate, and that's going to be a whole different ball of wax, but that's going to take place in uh, January. So I want to focus very quickly and briefly, since I'm taking up huge amounts of time, um, on... Um, what this week looks like in Washington, what's going on? There's strategies all over the place. The Democrats are trying to do one thing. The Republicans are, are talking about a totally different narrative. And um, slowly but surely, we're seeing that more and more Republicans don't seem to be um, thrilled with the way some of their Republican representatives and senators are behaving. So come on down. I have a question. 
Well, I'm just going to shift this a little bit. Come on down. Okay, so I want to take a look at this week in Washington, this week in politics. Let's take a look at the Republicans, the Democrats, and of course, Trump. So, here we go. Trump, Democrats, Republicans this week. Trump, Democrats, Republicans this week. Trump, Democrats, Republicans this week. Okay, so uh, this is actually, these four cards are actually super, super straight forward um, for the beginning or the base or the foundation of the reading. So it's talking about um, there are disappointment. There is disappointment not only um, with, from, the, by the American people. There is disappointment on the Democratic side because they do not appear to have been able to significantly shift public opinion to their side. There is disappointment on the Republican side because they also have not been able to shift any um, minds to their way of thinking. But there's also profound disappointment because Trump does not appear to understand how really, really um, devastating this could be going forward. He's only thinking of it sort of from a marketing or a strategy or a, a publicity point of view. And he's not understanding that this is a title he's going to wear forever and ever. And he is hamstringing his people. They can't defend him in the way they want to because he wants this thing to turn into a three ring circus. And um, I don't think that that is going to happen, although there is certainly going to be some uh, ridiculous amount of silliness that goes on in that hearing starting in January. Um, so the Democrats have really basically completed everything that they was in, that was in their purview to do. And they have accomplished in getting done what the American people of 2018 wanted, which was put some reins on Trump. They've accomplished that along with some 200 and I don't know, 50 um, pieces of legislation that is are sitting on Moscow Mitch's desk and he refuses to look at them. So, but for the most part, there is a sense of completion there. You have, um, this card represents a couple of things. It really does represent the, the two sides that in some way are almost like chained together in service to Trump. So you have, um, and this is really interesting. If you look really closely, you have this, we're going to say this is the Democrats and you can see that they are bearing fruit. So what they set out to accomplish was fruitful, perhaps not to the full extension that they would have liked. And on this side, we have the Republicans and you can see this is on fire and it's being torched by the devil. So literally what you have here is, is, Trump trying to control the narrative in a way that is only, only helpful to him. And he doesn't care if the rest of them all, all, you know, blow up and explode because don't forget, Trump wants to be emperor. He wants to be king. So if he's going to be emperor and king, he doesn't need all of these government representatives telling him what he can and cannot do. He wants to be king. And so they're in a position where they have a choice to make. And frankly, it's not an easy choice. Not that anybody has sympathy for them, but it's not an easy choice. And... Um, you're going to very much see that vote this week, literally straight down party lines. There might be one or two defections on either side. I know there's a couple Democrats who um, <clears throat> plan on peaching, uh, plan on voting to not impeach, but Pelosi has, you know, really the vast majority of votes on her side. So that's going to go through. 
but really, really expect it to be a straight sort of down party line vote. Um, and that's what you're going to see. And here comes the fool. And there comes his demise. So probably the most important thing that I want you um, to remember this week going forward is that his presidency is going to come to an end. It may not be as quick, it may not be as dramatic, but it is going to come to an end. And so it's really important that there be sort of this sense of um, calmness and, and positive thoughts surrounding this. So take comfort, you know, take comfort from that. You're going to hear some powerful statements being made by some powerful women. You're going to see information being brought forward um, from powerful women. That may start this week and, and trickle forward well into January, but you can definitely see some powerful women taking some powerful forthright positions, um, which reminds me, apparently over the weekend, Obama said that if every country in the world was run by women for two years, just two years, there would be a dramatic, basically, and significant improvement globally um, because in some ways women are just, you know, they just work better to bring harmony and balance. And so, <clears throat> yay, Obama, really enlightened statement coming from a man and an acknowledgement that on energetically that female power energy goddess energy is coming forward and it's moving into place and it's shifting into uh, really a new reality and again under the death card you now have the ten of swords like you're not going to recover from this he's not going to recover um it doesn't feel like it right now i understand but take comfort from the fact that he's, he, it does, there, there is nothing in these cards to indicate that he is actually going to be able to um, recover from this, even though he likes to talk a good talk. So what you have is, again, you have a compiling of assets, of information, of, um, you know, things moving forward. This can also represent you know, um, people maybe over the Christmas holiday having actually some time to start to process some of this information. There's, of course, going to be conversations around the Christmas dinner table. So, um, you know, it's just going to continue to move forward <clears throat> and, again, look for that powerful sort of female energy to be spearheading that. Now, both sides are trying to, in fact, all sides, uh, and so that would be the Democrats, <coughs> excuse me, the Republicans and, and Trump and the White House, are all trying to present this as if they are operating from a position of strength. And whether they believe it or not is sort of irrelevant to the fact that that is the front or the picture they are going to present with. So keep that in mind. You're going to hear some very sort of um, thumping the chest kind of statements being made by both all three parties and people. And you can expect Trump to be fairly vocal this week you can expect him to be out there trying to do what he can to change people's minds. You know, he's going to be playing the, um, the tariff card, the economy card, the, um, the, the, uh, um, sort of the USMCA trade agreement. He's going to be really trying to promote everything that is positive at the same time screaming and yelling that this impeachment is a sham and you know cannot um 
you know, should not be just listened to or given any credit. So now you have the star showing up and she's sitting right over top of strength. So what you're saying, what this is telling me is that those with the most, those with the intentions that are most, that are in the light, okay, that are the right, that are just, are going to see their wishes starting they're not going to be fulfilled this week, but you're going to start to see some um, movement towards that. And I mean, honestly, the most obvious of that is, of course, going to be that Wednesday vote. Um, but you're going to see that starting to move into place. But I again caution you, there is nothing that indicates for now anyways, that may change in 2020 in January, but for right now, there isn't a, um, a real strong feeling that the vote in the Senate is also going to be anything other than a party line vote. So take comfort from the fact that justice moves slowly, but it moves. And because it moves, eventually justice and truth win. There is a lot of stuff that Trump is very, very concerned that's going to come out. And of course, it mostly has to do with his assets. It has to do with money. It has to do with how he makes his money. Um, and that information, they're asking you, the spirit is asking you to take comfort from the fact that it's going to come out. It's going to start coming out more and more quickly going forward. Um, I know there was a lot of disappointment about the Supreme Court taking up the, um, the Trump case about his taxes, but again, there is a higher purpose and that higher purpose right now is to sweep out as much of the corruption and insanity as can be done. So, you know, know that. There's more information coming out. There's more communications coming out. There's more stuff coming out about his behavior, literally globally. So around the world in different countries. And of course you have all of it or 99.9% .9 of it pertaining to money. So again, stuff is going to start coming out and he's going to become more and more erratic. For right now, in some ways, the biggest challenge that they have in the White House, the biggest challenge that the Republicans have, is trying to figure out a way to keep Trump uh, contained, try to keep him in a place so that he is literally not shooting off his own foot, um, which frankly, he's dead eye on that. I mean, he is such a good shot when it comes to shooting off his own foot. It's remarkable. So um, they're trying really hard to get him at least on one page that he will stay on. That's not going to be successful. That's not likely to happen. His emotions are going to be overwrought. He's going to be yelling and screaming. He's going to be tweeting. He's going to be, you're not going to see, you're going to see bad behavior in public, but honestly, what is going on behind the scenes is truly, truly a sight to behold. Because if there is one thing he and frankly, the Republicans and the White House are all really scared of, it is the combination of truth the law and justice, because they do understand that it's not sitting uh, well for them. Okay, so again, take comfort from this. You've got powerful women working very hard to create situations where there will be justice and judgment passed and understand that there is still stuff going on behind the scenes that um, we, as the general public, are not privy to. Yeah, okay. So you have the sword of truth, you have the sword of law um, sitting center. And what you have here is communications moving forward, things being released, stuff coming out. 
And the timing is going to be interesting on this because it really could be almost like a trickle of information now and then as we move to 2020, frankly, when more people are going to be paying attention, um, you're going to see a lot of it coming, you know, sort of to fruition. It's going to become more clear than it is right now. And <clears throat> you have this sense of some of the turbulence that the United States has been feeling is going to start moving into smoother waters. And that's a curious thing because in some ways you would think that it would almost be the exact opposite, that things would become almost more and more chaotic and extreme. But it definitely looks like there is going to be some movement towards some calmer water for the next, um, you know, short while, kind of moving towards the beginning of the new year. So again, you know, interesting right and make no mistake there is going to be a change of fortune coming and th so this is it you have somebody someone being made an offer that they are not receptive to they don't want to take what is being offered now could that be um the Republicans saying, really, this has gone too far. You need to shut up and let us handle this our own way. Possibly. Could it be the Republicans saying, this is not going to end well. We really want you to think about leaving office. Possibly. Um, is he receptive to those ideas? Yeah, not at all. Because he, again, he wants a big, spectacular circus. He wants people dragged out in front of him as if they're like a lynching mob, for God's sakes. He just wants everybody brought down and he doesn't care what the cost is. And that is just not really going to work for him because you have balance coming in with this wheel of fortune. So what that means is fortunes are going to be changing and it has to do with news of money and it's going to have to do with people ultimately being um, disappointment disappointed and having to move away with um, you know sort of regret and, and sadness and right now there is a real focus certainly Trump is very very focused on his image um, his good name <clears throat> his um, status his money and his emotions again incredibly incredibly topsy-turvy take comfort again from the fact that you have the people who need to be working for and of the light they are continuing to work very very diligently to get things in place you have a victory card sitting here and you have the magician. And in this case, the magician is reading as a group of people who are going to use everything that is in their toolbox. Now understand part of the reason that sort of the more positive information that's coming out is being applied to the Democrats, um, Republicans, or, sorry, the Democrats and independents, those energies and forces that are moving towards the good and the light are because the, the power, the control right now is still in the Democrats' hands. And once it shifts to the Senate, um, you're going to see sort of a shift in the way the actual cards are read. There's going to be information coming out about money. I don't know whether it's going to come out this week or that's something that we're looking looking for going forward into the new year. But there is definitely some really, really big news coming out about money. And when it comes to money, it boils down to Trump, how he's cheating the government, and how he wants to be emperor not president he's not interested in being president that of course is creating a lot of tension a lot of squabbles and you have people literally <clears throat> trying to turn away from the truth because the truth isn't palatable and you have again this six of pentacles and that talks about um it, you know there's been a bit of a shift because trump is now the beggar he is no longer the um person in control, right? I mean, things have shifted and changed and he is now literally begging for people to um, 
not believe what they hear with their ears and see with their eyes. Okay. Now, um, I'm going to be doing a video probably um, in a day or two, and it really is going to not be so much a political video as much as it's going to be a reading about light versus dark and keeping thoughts really positive. It's... Um, it's just important that when you're you're thinking of something and you're trying to create something that you do not include any words that are negative or any words that have a negative connotation because it doesn't end well. Okay, so you can look forward to that this coming, I think it'll be Wednesday. Um, and you know, maybe you'll gain some insights and certainly I am hoping that it will be helpful in terms of everybody keeping um, their thoughts at a higher vibration so that everything can rise and the truth and the light come to the fore. So uh, I hope you're going to look forward to that. I guess we'll see on Wednesday. All right. So for now, take care, be well, and I will see you soon. Bye.